part two of our lecture for the GI system is going to relate to medications that deal with intestinal motility, how things move through the intestines. Our objectives for this unit um, are that you should be able to tell me um, what causes constipation and what causes diarrhea, and then explain uh, what medications that we use to treat constipation and explain the medications that we use to treat diarrhea. So basically, um, when we're talking about motility, we're talking about two things. We're either talking too much motility or not enough motility. Uh, just back to a little bit of what we talked about before. If you stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, you will increase intestinal motility. Okay, the parasympathetic likes to digest food. If you stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, you will decrease motility. That's that fight or flight response. When you want to run, you do not want to be digesting food. Okay, so when we're talking about our medications, we kind of need to keep those things in mind when we look at the medications that will increase intestinal motility and those that will decrease intestinal motility. So, what's constipation? Frequently, uh, patients usually describe constipation as hard stools or they can't go. Um, we tend to define it a little differently than that. Um, truly to be to have the diagnosis of constipation, uh, someone should have fewer than three bowel movements per week. And we live in central Pennsylvania and people are on this thing where they have to go every day or something is wrong. Some people physiologically don't have to go every day. So again, as healthcare providers, we will define it as three or few fewer bowel movements per week. Now, chronic constipation occurs when this continues for more than three months. Typically, many of the causes can be poor toilet habits, holding it in, not going when you need to. Um, Diet that's low in fiber because you're not creating enough bulk in the stool to um, cause evacuation to occur. And then sometimes you get some diseases um, such as someone has a spinal cord injury or um, someone has Parkinson's disease and some other things that can go along with that that may also cause um, constipation. Um, another one I can think of are, are there some depression and anxiety may also have an effect and cause um, decreased motility and therefore cause constipation. So how do we treat it? Um, really when we're talking about disorders of motility we treat the symptoms and, and then we also need to try to treat the cause or the source. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look at what is causing it. Is it the anxiety? Is it the diet? Is it dehydration? What is causing the constipation to begin with? And we need to work on that. And then in addition, we will go and help the symptoms along. But helping the symptoms along is only a temporary treatment. We must treat the cause in order to eradicate the issue of the constipation. So the treating the symptoms would be to administer a laxative. So laxatives are those substances that will increase GI motility. And we really have three different types of laxatives. Uh, one is that of stimulants. Stimulant laxatives work by irritating the lining of the intestines. So they, when they get into the intestines, they irritate it and the intestines go, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here, get out of my way, you're irritating me. And hence they evacuate feces. 
um, they work pretty rapidly and pretty quickly. Okay, so they do push things through pretty quickly. They can be pretty dramatic in some cases too. Examples of this would be As pictured here, castor oil. Castor oil you hear commonly amongst our plain people being used. Um, it is oil from a tree that it is an irritant to the intestines. Um, Duke Lox, you may have seen Duke Lox um, or Senecot. Um, both of those are irritant. Um, X Lax would be another example. Irritants. They irritate, irritate the intestine to stimulate it to evacuate. A second type that we use is a swelling agent. Swelling agents um, do not work as quickly as the stimulants, but they are less dramatic and they can be used over time. So you can take a swelling agent for a long period of time. Um, a stimulant laxative, people can become dependent upon them, um, so we only re recommend them for acute short-term usage. So the swelling agents work by um, plant fibers. They have a high amount of plant fiber in them, and when the plant fiber gets into the intestines, it swells, it soaks up water. When it soaks up water, it expands. And therefore, it creates bulk um, in the digestive tract. It pushes against the sides of the intestines. The intestines go up, oh, I have to empty. This is, the this is also the eat high fiber diet theory. Um, <clears throat> it is that fiber, that plant fiber that absorbs water. If people aren't getting enough fiber in their diet, um, this can be an excellent choice. Um, Fibercon would be an example. Metamucil would be another example of a swelling agent. Again, minimal side effects and they can be used long term without any issues. The last one, and which is the mildest of the three, would be that of an emollient. An emollient, if you think of emollients as being in creams, or oils and that that soften. So it provides oil into the feces that softens it and thereby makes it easier to pass. Example of this would be mineral oil. Um, this one we commonly have used a lot. I've used this a lot in pediatrics. Um, you can mix it in with um, a little bit of baby cereal and for kids that are particularly having issues because they're getting constipation because they're drinking formula that has iron in it this can be a big help for them um, over the counter just mix a little bit in with something it's not very palatable to take it straight uh, mix it in with something and take it and, and again very gently works by just softening the stools. Some people will call it a stool softener. If we flip the sides of the coin here, <clears throat> we're going to talk about diarrhea. Um, if we had to define what diarrhea is, in the acute stage, it is loose stools lasting for less than 14 days. Now, again, 
a person may come into the office, have one loose stool, and say they have diarrhea. In our definition, they don't have diarrhea. It should be more than one, but less than 14. That's an acute case. If diarrhea lasts more than 30 days, it's considered to be chronic. Um, and you usually start to see things like weight loss, muscle weakness, and you can even see loss of electrolytes going along with this. Um, a lot of acids and a lot of other minerals come out um, when feces is moving through the intestines that quickly. If you remember, the absorption of nutrients occurs in the intestines. So if it's moving through too quickly, the villi can't absorb the nutrients, and therefore you will see some metabolic as well as weight loss issues going along with chronic diarrhea. Causes? Well, there's a multitude and you may have experienced some of them yourself. Um, again, when we're looking at, at diarrhea, we have to look at the cause, just like we did with constipation. We need to treat the cause. We can alleviate the symptoms, but we need to treat the cause. Uh, this chart is also in your textbook. Things that that cause diarrhea, um, we can have a bacteria. So you get contaminated food, um, contaminated water, um, and things. You know that was our E. coli outbreaks, and that <clears throat> that's caused by a bacteria. Viruses can cause um, diarrhea. Rotavirus is a real common one that we see in kids. And we can see protozoas, um, amoebas, giardia. These, this is the stuff in contaminated water. The people that go to Mexico and you say, don't drink the water, and they do. Um, in which case, you know, we have a subsequent treatment we need to use to, to take care of the bacteria, the virus, or the protozoa. Um, bacteria and protozoa, we can use antibiotics. Um, for the viruses, we may need to use an antiviral um, if it's that severe. And of course, we need to disinfect everything so that we aren't passing it along to others or reinfecting. Medications can cause diarrhea. Um, and there's a whole list of them there. I chuckled because the last one is laxatives. whole list of, of medications that cause diarrhea and what you need to do is discontinue the use of the, di of the medication and then the diarrhea will um, be eliminated. You have some malabsorptive disorders um, that will cause um, diarrhea and then you can have other medical problems that will cause diarrhea um, as you see anemia, diabetes, um, colitis, those type of things. When you get the ones at the other medical disorders, again, we'll treat the disorder and get the disorder under control um, um, and then treat the symptom of the diarrhea. But again, we have to get back to the issue of what is the original cause. Um, the last one that we hear a lot about these days would be um, <coughs> You see it's called an increased osmolality disorder. Lactose intolerance is a huge one. If someone's lactose intolerant, they can't have um, a lot of lactose in their system. So if they reduce the amount of lactose products they are eating or drinking, it will then subsequently decrease the diarrhea. Again, these are all things that would treat the causes um, but we do have some medications that we can use that help the symptoms until the treatment for the cause clicks in. And these would be called antidiarrheals. And they work in one of two ways. They either decrease the motility, the smooth muscle movement in the intestines, or they get rid of whatever is in there irritating the um, intestine. So they bind with the whatever's irritating the intestine and um, get it out. Some examples, anticholinergics. Um, anticholinergics, we've heard again and again and again, they will decrease intestinal motility. 
an example of this that we use um, sometimes is called belladonna. Works for diarrhea. Narcotic derivatives. Also, narcotics slow down muscle movement. As a result, they slow down the digestive tract. Um, it may surprise you to know this, but Imodium and Lamotil are derivatives of narcotics and they will slow down the digestive tract and can be bought over the counter and work well for symptomatic relief of diarrhea. Absorbents are those ones that we talked about that they go in and they bind to whatever is irritating the intestines. So for example, um, Pepto-Bismol and Kaopectate. Um, those are ones that when they say it coats, so exactly what it does, it goes in and it binds to the substances that are irritating the intestines and therefore will decrease the symptoms of the diarrhea. And the last one on there um, is an anti-inflammatory and specifically I'm talking about anti-inflammatories for people who have things like Crohn's disease. Um, and we have a particular medication that was on your drug list that is prescribed just for that. Um, it's called Asacol, and Asacol is specifically prescribed just for the treatment of Crohn's disease. So it de helps decrease the inflammation going on in the intestines. Um, nine chances out of ten, for most times we're treating diarrhea, that's not what we're treating. But in the case that we are treating uh, this chronic inflammatory condition called Crohn's disease, um, Asacol is effective in the treatment of that disorder. Okay, MDU. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple scenarios here. You get the following patients, um, and they all come in with diarrhea. What would you recommend for each of them? You have Joyce, who well, was making burgers and decided to eat some of the raw hamburger. You have Billy Bob who went deer hunting and drank water from a stream in the woods. You have Karen, who is taking an antibiotic for a urinary tract infection. And Ishmael, who has irritable bowel syndrome. So think about what you would use to treat each of these disorders. Okay, here's the answers. Um, see how you did. Joyce, who ate the raw hamburger, um, antibiotic to treat whatever the organism is that's in the hamburger, probably E. coli, and then an absorbent um, to help absorb the irritant in her intestines and help with her um, symptoms of her diarrhea. Billy Bob? Well, he probably had contaminated water, therefore he's got a bacteria or a protozoa floating around in there, so we need to get rid of that with an antibiotic. And in the meantime, he also could take an absorbent that will help bind to um, and the irritant and um, help alleviate his symptoms until we've eradicated the organism with the antibiotic. <coughs> Karen. First off, let's discontinue the medication. Let's switch her off to another antibiotic. Um, and in the meantime, she also um, could take an absorbent to help decrease that irritation that was <clears throat> in the intestines. And then Ishmael. Ishmael, um, who has irritable bowel syndrome, this is a little different and that he's got this spasticity going on in his intestines. So we'd probably be best to give him um, an anticholinergic um, or a narcotic derivative. In most cases we use the anticholinergics for irritable bowel syndrome um, in that it, it nicely decreases the contractions going on in the intestines and decreases the spasticity. 
The narcotic would be a temporary one, short term, but the anticholinergic works are better um, for the long term usage without the other with side effects that go along with a narcotic derivative. So hopefully um, you did pretty good on that. And if not, you go back and check over your notes and um, see where we were coming from with each of those answers. Okay, and last we will end with our drug summaries for the next unit. And the next unit we're going to be looking at will be the endocrine system. And all these medications relate to the endocrine system. So you'll want to take each of the six medications um, and complete one drug summary form for each of the medications and submit it to me by the end of the week. When you're finished with all that, um, have a good weekend and I'll talk to you next week.